Hey guys, so today we're going to continue finishing up our, our cardboard counter and in the previous video uh, we did the base of the counter so next up we need to do the top of the counter and a shelf inside it and then um, follow it up with a coat of epoxy so everything is nice and uh, strong and, and you know relatively water resistant too. So let's give it a shot. All right, so what we want to do first is build a shelf for our cabinet door. And I'm thinking the shelf would kind of be right around the middle or so. And that'll give us two layers of storage. So let's uh, cut to size the, a piece that will fit perfectly in here. And then we'll design the brackets, cardboard brackets for it. All right, so I cut these two pieces for the shelf according to the shape of the box and I have two pieces and they're in opposite um, striations I guess you could say say the corrugation uh, maybe that's what you want to call it so this one goes towards you and this this one goes that way so um, I'm going to glue them together and then we're going to epoxy them to get them strong and then we'll work on the brackets Alright, that should be strong. We'll epoxy it later. Alright, so for the brackets, I got these corners right here. And these corners were, uh, it's cardboard. It's with some packaging that uh, came with some bigger pieces, some furniture pieces that they put on the, on the edges to protect the stuff. But I'm going to use it as my bracket. Basically, I'm just going to glue it like this. Of course, I'm going to cut it and put it right here. But I'll just show it to you right here, and that's the way it'll look. So let's let's give that a shot. All right, so I, one of these brackets, I just have it wedged in there for right now. One goes there, and another one would go like that. And just like that, we'll have some brackets for the shelf to go on. Hopefully I do it straight. All right, so I got those two brackets hot glued in. Next up uh, is the top. And what I want to do is I want to reinforce the corners of these things with the exact same thing that I, I used for that. So I found those uh, in some packaging, but I'm going to put it on the corner to reinforce the corners. Right, so I have those corner things, corner brackets here on the corners, put on the bottom, and I'm going to do it for all the corners over there. That actually gives it a really good extra foundation angle and when I put glue here when I put the countertop on it's going to give me more surface area to glue it onto so that's going to be perfect okay so I got these corners in there and there and also I had a few extra pieces so I put a corner there and a corner there and I'm starting to wonder if I don't need another support piece right here uh, Still thinking about it, but uh, I may put up another piece right here, but for sure I'm going to use the top of this uh, microwave as another big support piece. Uh, you could see it's just about the same level, and I made it so that if you just put one little piece of cardboard, it'll be flat and it'll be secure. All right, so I decided I don't want to cheat and use the that wood in a saw um, so I'm gonna um, roll up some cardboard into uh, little cones and basically make it the size of this uh, paper make it the size of the cup holder and now I just need to level it and I'm gonna mark my spot so if I make a cone or a, a cylinder to that shape, to that height, it should be perfect with everything. So I got some cardboard rolled up just like that. We'll put it right there and that's actually going to fit really nice. So I'm glad I didn't cheat. I'll just use this as that back piece and you can see when I put a, a plate on it's going to be nice and straight. So I'm going to do two, another one right here. Okay, got the two posts up made one a little bit bigger than the other but actually it's fine either way um, I think the only I decided I don't need another wall 
I think it'll be okay because uh, there's gonna be a lot of support here here and there and you can't shove a lot back there anyway so now I need to cut a top that will be the perfect shape and I'll probably do a triple ply for the top all right so I cut this to size it looks pretty good one lovely thing about cardboard is it's so much easier to cut than wood <laughs> but anyways so uh, I need to do this is only a two ply right now I need to do a, a third ply and I'm gonna again uh, make the corrugations go this way because these two are going this way I'm gonna sandwich it with one going that way and then we'll glue it together epoxy it and then put it all together okay so now I'm gonna glue the countertop pieces together and uh, three pieces and I'm going to use regular wood glue um, the reason is for one the glue gun it will not stay hot long enough for me to evenly line everything up so by the time I'm done applying all the glue the glue is going to be dried over here so I don't want that so I'm going to have to do it the old-fashioned way with the with the glue wood glue and I'm going to let it sit overnight and then uh, well yeah, I'm going to let it sit overnight and then I'm going to epoxy it. So unfortunately, it's going to be a little bit slower. We'll let that dry all right man i'm pretty stupid i i glued this thing with the ugly side up so this this seam right here was supposed to be on the inside not the outside but unfortunately this is the top so this is the ugly side and it's the top but what can i do at this point um, the good news is that the glue is dried enough so that i could start epoxying and what I have is this 24 hour epoxy. It's, it's, a, it's a lower cost epoxy. And you know me, I like to buy the cheapest stuff I could find on Amazon. And uh, this was the cheapest one I could find on Amazon for 40 ounces. And you could get a better price if you buy bigger. Uh, but I'm not, wasn't willing to invest in a one gallon jug or anything like that. But we're gonna put this, mix this together and uh, do the bottom first uh, so that we could flip it over and do the top. One to one ratio, mix it up really good. If you don't, it just won't harden correctly. And my experience with epoxy is that uh, whenever you think you're done mixing it, mix it some more. Get whatever's been sitting at the bottom, bring it to the top. So this is a self-leveling epoxy, so it's a little bit thinner because, you know, it wants to level itself out. That's part of the reason why it's going to take a little bit longer to cure. It's going to be a 24-hour cure. I just cut a piece of a sponge. Let's see how that goes. All right, so I got the epoxy on and it's a 24 hour cure, but honestly, uh, I don't think it'll take that long because I, I don't have a thick layer or anything like that. And it's gonna absorb into the paper. It's not like it's a thick thing that you're doing on a wood or something like that. It's just a thin layer on cardboard. So, you know, I think overnight I could start uh, flipping it around and doing the other side. Okay, here's another lesson learned. So if you put too little epoxy when it's too thin, it will, the cardboard will just soak it up. Uh, but you need to have some thickness to it. So you see these parts where there's a glob of epoxy? You know, that's actually what, what I'm looking for, that, that shiny gloss. But if you don't have enough, it'll just kind of soak into the paper and it won't have any real thing. So this is all good. It looks wet, but that's actually what I want. The good news is that this is just the bottom side, no big deal. Uh, next up, I need to do this top side, uh, which I, I need it to be a little bit more durable because this is what uh, things will be on. 
So I'm going to learn my lesson and put a little bit extra oomph on this side. All right, so I think it's established that I am not good at applying epoxy. So I did a better job this time, but still you could see some areas that uh, I didn't do it thick enough. But that's okay. I'm going to take it like this because I'm going to cover the top anyway. All right, so despite uh, the even unevenness that I have for this, I'm actually not going to glaze it again with epoxy. It's actually pretty hard, even in the, the areas where I didn't put as much. And the reason why I'm not going to glaze it again to make it even is that for this tabletop, I got this wallpaper some peel and stick wallpaper that we're going to put on top and this is of course uh, water resistant for the most part so let's put it on and give it a shot all right so i've never actually used this stuff before and never built with cardboard either for that matter so i'm just learning as i go along but for the most part it's just like a giant sticker so we're going to put it on and see how it looks I highly suspect this is not going to stick to the edges very well because there's just no material for it to hang on to. Might just need to use some glue on the edges. Alright, that's how it looks. Let's uh, try the heat gun on it. Alright, you guys know I'm making stuff up as I go along. I don't know how this is going to turn out. No, that's not making it stick any better. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some glue gun, the, the hot glue, to uh, make the edges stick. All right, so I think I got it. There, that's how it looks. Not the prettiest thing, but uh, I probably could have done a better job if if this wasn't my first attempt. But we'll install it. So I, I didn't want any of the folds here on the bottom because I wanted it to stick when I glue it to the, the counter. So what I'm going to do now is going to put the shelf in and you can see I covered the shelf with packaging tape. So uh, in a situation like this, I think the packaging tape is just uh, easier than the epoxy and, and sufficient. So what it's going to do, it's going to sit on those brackets. Remember we did those brackets and when I glue this in, it's actually going to give add extra support to the whole system. So it's it's uh, twofold. I get a shelf and I get extra support when I glue it in. So I'm gonna put it in and glue it in. All right, so the shelf is in nice and snug. So I'm gonna glue around the perimeter. And that's gonna give it extra support because there's a middle plane and then everything will be nice and tight. So let's take a look at the shelf. That's the way it looks. So from here, I have a shelf. You can see from the lower side, I added some glue on the bottom side too. So that should be nice and secure. So now let's install that tabletop. So the mounting places for this tabletop, or gluing places I should say, are these places here, here. I'm going to put a cardboard piece right on top of here because you can see that I made it so that once I put a cardboard here, it should be flush with the top. I'm going to have some uh, gluing points here, just cardboard here, just so that it will be you know nice and secure, that the weight actually sits on top of the microwave, which is what I want, which sits on top of the battery, which is what I want. Okay, but you could see that there's a problem. There's no way that I'm gonna be able to glue everything and keep the glue hot before I install everything on because the glue will definitely dry up by then or cool off and I won't be able to get it on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue 
onto the, these two guys first, and then I'm gonna try to glue these guys afterwards. And I might have to just come underneath after the table is in to get to all these points. So we'll give it a shot. Okay, so I'm gonna measure everything up first. I don't want that there. Um, and then plan out my strategy, cause I gotta do it quick, remember? So this is about the spacing that I want. That That's the gap. Looks good. So I'm going to need to make a, mem a mental note of how everything sits glue it on because those two points remember i can lift it up with the whole table and that'll be fine table there's no room for me to show you but i'm going to come in and put some glue around the edges of both these things so i'm going to do that right now all right i did what i could squeezing in what little space I have. All right, so now I'm gonna shoot some glue in the corners all around. All right, so let's take a look at where we're at now. That's the way it's looking. I think the fit is pretty nice. So move over here and we have this storage little slot right there. Yes, it, I did plan on that. That's why I cut the thing like in, in that fashion instead of just having a solid piece there. So comes over here. Make sure I can open that. Of course you can. Everything's nice and tight on top. Let's look around. All right, you can see all the glue that's drying right there. So next up, what I wanna do is I wanna paint this part. Now I could epoxy it and I know that works, but I wanna paint it too, see how well that works. I wanna see if that leaves a nice, you know, hard coating or not. I know epoxy works, so we already proved that. So this time I wanna do something different. I know epoxy works on the top, but I wanted to try um, this wallpaper, which it, it's a little bit rough, you know. It it shows all the imperfections in the cardboard, which, you know, is not that good. But what you can do is put a layer of epoxy on top of this too, and that'll make it nice and smooth and glossy. But I'm not going to, but I'm just learning, and this is, you know, more proof of concept. So let's paint it and see how that goes. All right, next up guys, you know as know, I hate watching paint dry, but that's what's next. But that's the way it's looking. Let's give me a better angle. There you go. And uh, we'll see after the paint dries if it leaves a nice uh, extra hard film coating on it or not. Uh, but like I said, it's all learning experience. Okay, paint is dry and I think it looks pretty good. Um, Here's some drawbacks. Now, again, learning experience. You see the curvature of this. So if you're gonna paint something like this, you should probably paint both sides. So maybe it'll not favor one side over the other. But I'm sure it's something that we'll just be able to bend back. Uh, another thing is that, uh, you know, I'm pushing it. I don't feel like it leaves a, a hard coating like, like, of course, not like epoxy, but I just wanted it to be a little bit harder, but yeah, it feels still exactly the way cardboard does, uh, a little on the soft side. So uh, if you're hoping to get a little bit of extra strength from the paint, I'm not sure you're gonna get any. So let's take a look at it though, but what you will get is better looks, because look at that. It does look better than cardboard, that's for sure. So that's the way it's looking. Here's my top with um, the wallpaper. Now again, this shows all the imperfections once you put the paper down. But I don't think that's ba too bad either. I think it looks pretty good. If you did want to make this a little bit more um, 
watertight, putting a coat of epoxy on top of that would be great too. Uh, again, this is not going to be a real uh, camper build that I'm going to camp in a lot. So just a proof of concept, just learning a few things. So you know, remember up here what I did with the packaging tape and tried to paint it. That was a bit of a failure. Um, but you know, another thing you could do is just put stickers on it like I have up there. But that's another story. So coming back here, uh, what I have to do next is come, to come over here, I'm going to take out the battery and I'm going to put some screws into these, uh, this cardboard so that, uh, of course, it doesn't slide this way. We know it's pretty strong going this way, but sliding, you know, there, there's definitely some play still. So I need to screw that down and also going to screw it down in here. So I'm going to put one, two, three, four here and probably four under, underneath that, so inside the box itself after I take out the battery. I'm gonna put in a handle, and then I think we'll be done. Oh, wait, one more. We hook the power, and then we'll be done. So now I wanna make it so that I could take out the battery in and out when I want to, but you can see I'm going to box myself in a corner if I keep this right here. So I'm gonna cut something right there too okay a little bit off but okay it actually does not move at all so let's tape everything up Let's put the wiring back. All right, this cap on. Another nice thing is that uh, the wires will just tuck underneath the box. And be careful when you're rehooking it, when you retouch it, uh, it might spark. Well, there was a tiny bit, you probably couldn't even see it. It was so tiny, but it did spark a tad bit. All right, that's actually kind of nice and neat. So let's put the last screws in. All right, so if you remember on the inside, there's this border right here, it's that frame. So I'm gonna put some screws to secure that a little bit more. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting screws on court, cardboard to cardboard. And put one through this center thing. We could touch up a little bit of paint on those later. All right, so I got those screws in. Let's take a look. Got two screws there and two screws on this side. That is going to keep this thing nice and firm. All right, so I put a little bit of touch-up paint on the screws, so we're going to let that dry, of course. But last thing I need to do right now is put a little handle on this side. This All guy. right, so I'm just going to use a rope for the handle. And with these ropes, you want to make sure that they don't keep fraying, so you want to like singe the ends okay and to thread it through this little hole a little bit easier what you could do is take a little bit of tape just make yourself a, a nicer point through okay take that off so now I'm going to just make a knot so 
cleanse this before I make the knot. Okay, now I have a handle. So um, what I noticed is that uh, the the paper it, it you know it starts to it wants to come apart. So again, this is bending a little bit. So what I want to do is I'm going to line the edge with some packaging tape. That way it should go in and out a little bit smoother. Oh poo, look what I did. I I put the the knot right on here. Oh man. All right, so what I could do, let me show you what I did. So what I did was I tied the knot right where that shelf is. That's why it doesn't want to close. So I'm going to cut a little notch so that uh, that knot could go there, unfortunately. <laughs> Certainly not ideal. But at least now I could close it. All right. So for right now, I'm just going to let the friction hold it in tight. You know, for this one, I have a little twisty knob that I have a little marker that I know I can open it and then close it. But uh, this one, I'm just going to leave like that for now. So let's take a look. All right. So now I'm done with the cardboard cabinet and counter and Let's take a look. Now that my me method has improved since my first cardboard efforts, I think it's actually pretty darn nice. And the paint is still drying when I touched up the screws, but let's take a look at that. Here's the counter. Microwave sits inside the battery. So things are pretty secure. Of course, it's not as secure as wood, don't get me wrong, but I think it looks pretty darn good. Let's look at the back. All right, here's what it looks like in the back, and look at that battery. It's nice and secure inside there. Looks good. Okay, so of course, you know, you can make cardboard look good, but the, the, the real issue is, you know, is it going to be strong enough? And that's kind of the question, and that's the challenge that I had. And, it's time to wonder, do I dare and do I dare? If you know what poem that is from that I was referencing, put a comment. But anyways, do I dare climb up on this thing? Let's give it a shot. I'm 170 pounds, by the way. Hundred and seventy. Ah. I think it is strong enough. I, I don't know about longevity, but it's strong. So you could use cardboard to make your counter and you could hold a microwave and a big battery. But if you got to use the battery to your advantage by using it as support, but uh, I think this proof of concept is actually quite successful. And you see me climb up. I guess the only thing left now is Miller time. <laughs>